Hi everyone and welcome back to our charged jump videos. In the last episode we actually got our charged jump working but usually accompanying this is some UI element on the screen that shows us how much we have charged. So I'm going to show you a quick easy way of managing this right now. The last time we were here we created the charge jump. So let's just play that and show that for you again. If I hold down the space bar and let go we do a jump. And the size of that jump is dependent by how long we hold down that space bar. So what we want to do is show this on the screen as part of the UI. So we first of all need to create some UI for this thing. So let's go ahead and create ourselves our widget by going to user interface or widget blueprint. And we're going to name this one layer. HUD. And this will be the container for all of our HUD elements. So that'd be where your health, ammo, everything else is going to be, including our charge jump. So let's make our charge jump a separate widget where we can sort of compartmentalize where things are going to go. And this all compartmentalization is what you want to be doing for a lot of your game, really. You want to break it apart as much as possible to make it as easy as possible to edit, fix, and debug. So here we're going to do the, the jump meter. And I'm going to go inside my jump meter and put in a very basic progress bar. So we're not going to do anything fancy graphics wise, at least in this episode. We're just going to get it working. And that should be always your first point of call when building anything UI related is just to get it working. Don't worry about making it look fancy just yet. So as I said, we need a progress bar. I'm going to drag that into our hierarchy. Always drag down into the hierarchy. It's a lot more accurate. Granted, there's nothing in here at the moment, so we can't really miss. But it can be a common problem that I've seen is people drag it out from the palette into the viewport and accidentally drop it into the wrong panel. So always try and use it from top to bottom. It makes it a lot easier. So there's our progress bar. Now, obviously, it won't be this size in the actual HUD. We'll, we can customize that in the HUD later. But the main thing with the progress bar is that when we have it selected, we can change its percentage. So you see the percent over here is set to zero goes up to 0.5 up to 1 okay so progress bars, progress bars go between 0 and 1 so what we need to do is make this progress bar appear and change when we are holding down the jump button now the easy way of doing this is by going to the graph and actually putting the input action on here as well now you may think that you may not be able to do that but you can so if I do IA jump this will now trigger at the same time as when I push the button for the character. Now this only works when the input mode is set to something with game in it. So it could be a game mode, uh, so game input only or game and UI only. But we by default are game only, so this should work just fine. Now a big thing about this is the elapsed seconds. We already got this information from our player character for doing the jump. And it's basically going to be doing the exact same thing. So let's go ahead to our player character and just copy what we've got over there. No point in doing it again. We can just copy. So we're going to copy all of this working out up to the lerp. Okay. And this is because we only want the value to be going between 0 and 1 because that's where the progress bar goes, 0 and 1. So I just need these three well, before you can do the jump curve nodes. So we're going to copy those, go to our jump meter, and paste them in. Now, when you do that, the jump curve here variable is not going to be valid. It's going to be grayed out. So all you have to do is right-click on this and do create variable. We're going to hit compile, then click on the jump curve, because now we need to set which jump curve to use. And be exactly the same one as our player character. So now we're getting this value coming out. We can now make this update and change the progress bar. So I'm going to drag out my progress bar and the variable list. And from there, we're going to do set percent. Now, a little tip for you if you want to know what is available for you in nodes for each item, it's anything you see in the details panel. So if you see it here, it means you can change it, typically. So percentage is there, and that's going to go into the get float value. Now, which one of these is it going to go into? 
is actually going to go into the ongoing. So ongoing means whilst it's being held, before it's been completed or cancelled, it will run, there's like a tick. So it's going to be constantly updating the value here. So hit compile, save that. Okay, let's close that now and go to our player HUD. And in here, we're going to put in a canvas panel to sort of act as our container for everything. And the reason why we use canvas panel is because it gives us absolute positioning and full control over where we want things to be placed. So now I'm going to search for my jump meter. I'm going to drag that into my canvas panel. And there it is. And I can resize it however I want. Now I'm going to reposition mine into the center at the bottom here. Now to do that, I could just drag it down, but the problem with doing this is the anchor won't be correct. Meaning if we have different size screens, it'll make it not centered exactly. I want it to always pick the center. So what we do is with it selected, go to the anchors option and you get a load of previews of what ones you can pick. We want to pick this one at the bottom and I'm going to hold down shift and control. Now when I do this, it's actually going to move it and realign it according to this image preview. There you go, it snaps to the bottom there. However, I do want to offset it a little bit, so I'm going to go to position Y and put in negative 100. And let's now make the size a little bit nicer. So size in the X will do 450 and size in the Y will do 60. There we go. Hit compile and save. Okay, so now we need to make our HUD appear in our game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Blueprints folder and go to the controller. And you can do this on the character if you want. I prefer using the controller because the character could be destroyed or moved or gone rid of and you may not want to get rid of your HUD because of that. It's a lot easier to control it from the controller because whilst you're playing the game, the controller is the only controller. So on Begin Play over here, we're going to create widget. And we're going to choose our player HUD. Let's just promote that to a variable. And we'll call it HUD. It's a good idea whenever you create a widget to just promote to a variable as it will just save you a lot of hassle later on. And here we're going to do add to viewport. Compile, save. So now if we go back into the game, we've got that meter on the bottom now. And if I hold down my jump key, it don't work. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, yes, it don't work because I done something silly. I forgot to plug in something, didn't I? So on the jump meter, I forgot to plug in the elapsed seconds. There you go. You need that. <laughs> don't forget to put that in there. Um, hit compile. And now let's try that again. There you go. And we, because we're using that curve, you can kind of see that curve behavior in the jump key visually now. So let's go look at one step further and make the progress bar only show and hide when we are actually holding down the key. We don't want it to be on the screen the whole time probably. So let's go back to my jump meter. And when it started, I want to change the visibility of this entire widget. So we're going to do set visible. And you see set visibility. And we're going to change that to non-hit testable self and all children. Now the difference between visible and non-hit testables is that they are still visible. But with non-hit testables, it means you can't click on them and interact with them. In this case, we don't. It's just going to be a visual thing. So it's good practice to say and think, like, is the player actually going to interact with this thing? If they're not, make it non-hit testable. Okay. Now, when it's completed, we don't want to just set it back to hidden because it will look kind of annoying. So I could show you here. If I go completed and change it back to hidden. And don't forget to also set the default to hidden. So we're going to click on the top of the hierarchy to select the whole entire widget. Go down to visibility, change to hidden. So, ah, 
if it doesn't actually hide, this is sometimes you'll find a problem. If you have changed it to hidden here and you're using it as like a part of a bigger HUD, go into that HUD, click on the meter, and you'll find the behavior for the visibility has not been updated. You can either just hit the reset property to default value or change it manually. I just prefer to use it default one. So now that should respect that change. There you go. So now you can see it appears and disappears when I push the button and release the button. But I might want it to just linger on the screen for a little bit before we remove it. So we're going to go into our jump meter, go to the graph. And before we do make it invisible, we want to delay it a little bit. And what I'm going to do is we can put in a little delay. And we'll do a delay for 0.5 seconds. So not long, just enough for the player to recognize what they actually jump to. So there you have it. We have a charge jump now with a bit of UI on the screen. But we can go one step further and really improve the visuals of our charge jump. So in the next episode, we're going to start looking at the, the changing the visuals of the visual effects and the widget to make it look a bit more exciting for our charge jump. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you find all my videos early from just $1 a month. So a massive thank you to everyone who is supporting the channel over on Patreon and also everyone on YouTube members. And if you're not, if you have not subscribed already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.